You know, uh, it was a great time there for seven years, and uh, you know, the people were good. I mean, it's good people there, and the fan base and stuff, and I, I enjoyed my time there, my family did, and uh, always wishing the best. You worked with Tommy Armstrong. Uh, mm -hmm. How much relevance is there that you know him, there was tendencies, you know, all that? Well, I mean, obviously, I had him when he was a lot younger as a redshirt freshman and, and that, and he's grown up a lot. He's playing really well for him, and I'm proud of him, and, and uh, you know, he's he's obviously changed in their system and stuff, so, you know, it's it's a different time and a different uh, offense, so it's a lot harder to say this is, who, you know, what he does. Did you Tim, know you too? Uh, yes, I did. Could you just... Mark, what a loss. It was it was a terrible loss. Uh, Sam was a great young man, and he was liked by everybody on the football team, and it was uh, quite a shock, really, for for all of us involved. That, that knew him. How, how cool is it to be able to honor a young man like that, though? Uh, the way y'all are going to honor him, at least uh, in some ways, on Saturday. Yeah, you know, uh, it's a great tribute, really, to every football team, and. You know, it just shows good people, you know, the humanity and being able to, uh, you know, keep his spirit alive and what he meant to the game of football and, you know, how he gave back a lot to the community and the younger kids and things that he did. And, uh, you know, it's just a, it's really special, you know, really special. I want to ask you about the play calling uh, procedure here. When, mm -hmm. Does Ed Warner make the call and you, you sometimes suggest play calls and, and then Coach Meyer has the final call? Just Kind of take me through how, how you guys do that. Uh, you know, it, it kind of all varies um, in terms of uh, down and distance, you know, sometimes. But usually between series, we'll talk, come up with kind of a, a set plays that we like formationally and plays we want to run. And then usually Ed, sometimes myself, will will make that call depending on, you know, again, what it is. Do you feel like that process is going well, like the three of you guys together just? Yeah, I mean, you know. I think you got, you got really, and, and Zach's involved and, and Stud and Tony Alford. I mean, everybody's involved between series to give suggestions to be able to get the, the schemes. You're like, got a lot of great minds, obviously. A lot of guys coach a lot of football and see things. So um, I think it's been good. Tim, Tim you, you see the vertical passing game suddenly blooming in the next several weeks I mean what what's well from you your know, vantage point what do you see there that gives you a potential or gives you the feel that it could you know I think the the, the thing probably got to do is when those opportunities are there we got to do a better job of converting some teams are taking that away you know I mean you don't you can't force it that got us in trouble last year sometimes trying to force the vertical passes to get interceptions we're trying to take care of the football first and foremost and uh, hit the open guy mm -hmm. so uh, like I said, sometimes that open guy is a deep guy, and we haven't converted quite as much. Those chances are fewer and far between, but we got to do a better job of hitting them. So is JT showing even more patience than maybe even you know you've seen before in him as far as not forcing that? I think he's been good, really good. If you noticed uh, him getting the ball out mm -hmm. and hitting the guys that I mean, most of the guys he's been going to for the for the most part, um, he's read right and hit the correct guy he should be hitting. Tim, uh, speaking of JT being patient, um, it seems like and being able to pick his spots and stuff that at times Tommy hasn't really done it as well. Uh, he's thrown quite a bit uh, interceptions in his career. I was just wondering, when a guy is taking risks the way he does at times, when he hits those risks, can it be a problem for a defense? Yeah, I mean, obviously, if you, uh, you know, it's high risk, high reward, right? I mean, if you put the ball where you're not supposed to put it, you got a chance for interceptions, but if you put it where our guy can do that and make that play, it could have a chance to be a big play with it. So um, I think sometimes that takes place. It's kind of a gamble, idea, right? Yeah, it is and at times. I wonder what it would be like. I know that you're an offensive coach, but having dealt with him and having dealt with JT to kind of gamble a little bit in a big game like this. For? <laughs> to, to have to defend it and to be on the side where it's happening. Yeah, you know, again, I, I mean, those guys have done a good job coaching, and, and I think he's improving off, Tommy's improving off a lot. Um, again, just some crossover film from what I've seen of, of doing that. But, uh, you know, certainly the way they coach or how they read their progressions is probably a little different than us.
Go, this, this week, Urban has talked about he wants to take what's available. Yeah. But he's Last also said questions. he wants to be more explosive. Yeah. How hard is that to balance, and how much is that thing focused this week? Well, I mean, obviously you want that. All, all great offenses want to have the big play capability to be able to score so you don't have to go on a 15, 18 play drive. Um, but again, you, you can't be greedy with it because you could turn the ball over. And when you're playing in some big ball games, you don't want to do that. You don't want to give the other team life on the road or you know even at home and feel like you give them opportunities to keep the game close. You got to be careful uh, how you do that. So you got to pick and choose your spots when you can do it and then you got to be able to execute when that when that time comes. Tim, so what's you, your biggest memory of, of coaching at Nebraska? Uh, you were on a staff there where y'all just according to their fans, y'all didn't quite get over the hump, but y'all had some big moments, you know, played in the Big Ten Championship game. I mean, what, 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 what do you remember most of all? What do you recall most of all about your time there? You know, just uh, great kids. I mean, I, I thought um, great coaches, you know, getting the opportunity to be around Coach Osborne, legendary coach, and getting to know him. Um, and really just just that environment. Mm -hmm. You know, it is a, it is a unique place. Um, and, you know, it's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to coach at a place like that. Hey, Tim, I know you said last yeah. question. Um, I was wondering, um, having recruited at Nebraska, and they used to be in the Big 12, and now mm -hmm. they're kind of in the middle of the country where there aren't a ton of prospects harder, in Nebraska. Harder. Is it harder to build a program and to recruit to a program that has the tradition of, you know, a power but might not have a rich soil Base. like, like yeah. Uh, Ohio does? Yeah, I, I think uh, the move. Um, definitely took an impact, uh, took a toll a little bit there in terms of having a, a solid home, per se, because you're right, there's, there's good football players in the state of Nebraska, but there's not a lot of them. So you have to go out of state to sign your players. Did you find it was harder to go to Texas after the move? Yeah, it was. Coach, thank you very Thanks, much. Tim. Thanks, Tim. Okay. Thanks, Tim.